You are listening to Austin Gardner's thoughts on missions and leadership training. For more information, please check us out at austingardner.com. Well, I'm excited to be coming to you guys with a little lesson on preaching, and this is the first one. So tonight, I'd like to just give you some ideas I give in our teachers and workers meeting at Vision Baptist Church, and I think maybe you can use them uh, as you prepare to be a better preacher and teacher. So the first thing I'd like to tell you is that being a teacher means you're under stricter judgment. People are watching you. They see what you're doing, and you teach more by what you do than by what you say. So I want to challenge you, if you're going to be a teacher and you're going to be in the ministry, that you take this very seriously. The Bible says in James chapter 3 and verse 1, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. That word master there is the word teacher. Be not many teachers. Don't be the guy who puts himself up in front of people. And by the way, if, teacher, if a teacher has more responsibility, a preacher has far more responsibility when you stand up there. So what you do is more important than what you say. If you're going to be the guy that God's going to use in a pulpit before we ever get around to opening the Bible, there's a clear list of things about you in 1 Timothy chapter 3 are, that are what should be characteristics in your life. You should already be living out these things. And so I would challenge you to head that way. Now, a good teacher, good preacher, is a faithful, consistent follower of Jesus Christ who gives an example to be followed. In other words, if you're going to be a good teacher, you will be faithful. Um, that would be faithful in your moral life, meaning that you would know how to treat people of the opposite sex meaning that you would maintain purity in your thoughts and uh, in regards to pornography that would not be a part of your life. It means that in regards to people of the opposite sex, you would not be uh, developing a relationship outside of your marriage. Uh, it, it means that you would honor God in every part of your life. And I know sometimes that goes against our culture. We're raised with a different morality, but we are Christians. We're born again. We're people of new character. And so we do what the Lord has told us to do. So we are an example. We're consistent. It's, uh, some of us can be real good Christians for a while, but the point is that it becomes the way you live, the way you talk, and the way you are. And who you are will determine what you do with your life. Being a Bible teacher or a Bible preacher is a life commitment. It certainly has very little to do with a few minutes that you're in the pulpit. Now, in all honesty, some of us put great emphasis on how long we're in the pulpit. And we act like, well, I was preaching uh, for 30 minutes and I studied for my message and I preached a good message. But the truth is you didn't live it out. And so it wouldn't matter what you did in that 30 minutes or 45 minutes that you preached. It has to be who you are. It has to be who you are. It has to come out that way. If you are not faithful, you cannot teach others to be faithful because they were going to be what you are, not what you say. They're going to follow your example, not your preaching. The facts are that people remember very little of what you say, but they remember a lot about what you do. So they're watching you and they're deciding how they'll be and what they'll do in every one of their uh, sessions that they see you. They see you on the street. They see you with your wife. They see you with your children. They see how you pay your bills. They see all these things about you. And that's going to affect greatly uh, how they're going to perceive you. And, and you're preaching more with your life than you are your words. I hate teaching on preaching unless it's come at the end of a whole lot of teaching on being, on who you are. Because so many people are excited to be in a pulpit. They love being a speaker. They love being the orator. They love thinking they can talk a lot, but they're not living a lot. And so I, I hope that you will realize that you're under stricter judgments. Your actions speak louder than your words. Your actions speak louder than your words. So remember the first thing today, being a teacher means you're under stricter judgment. People are watching you. Second thing I'd, I'd bring to your mind today is every teacher ought to desire to be a better teacher and be actively working on improving. Now I have been teaching and preaching uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 or 46 years. 
and yet I work on a consistent basis on trying to learn how to be a better teacher or preacher. Uh, I don't think you can ever believe that you have arrived. I don't think that you can ever believe that you have arrived at who you are or what you ought to be. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, in verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth on those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so the idea is that I'm constantly stretching, constantly straining, constantly reaching forward to make myself a better teacher and a better preacher and to be more used by God. If I could give you this equation, ability plus opportunity equals responsibility. Ability plus opportunity equals responsibility. So God has given you some sort of ability or you wouldn't be sitting in a class and having a discussion right now about preaching and teaching. Uh, God has given you an opportunity uh, and that's where you get to teach and preach and all of that stuff. So that makes it a very responsible position. Every Christian should desire the opportunity to teach others. So you're not alone. Every teacher, every Christian ought to be doing, desiring that. But you need to remember that good teachers and good preachers don't just happen. We have to work at it. You are not born a good preacher. You are not born a good teacher. It's something that you will spend hundreds of hours working on. You will need to improve the rest of your life. The teacher is the key to success in any Bible class or any church. You have a position of great responsibility. It is an opportunity, but it is a responsibility. And it should lay heavily on your shoulders. You should honestly realize I am in the middle of big things, and I need to take this seriously. The success or the failure of your class or of your church will ultimately lie with you as the teacher or the preacher. The success or the failure will ultimately lie with you. So are you an example and do you take it seriously? Are you taking the position of, I know that much more is expected of me than regular people and I take that seriously. The third thing is every Bible teacher should realize how much we need God to work in and through us as we teach. You need to realize you need God and you need him to work in and through you as you teach the word of God. So you're going to have to learn to always ask God for help. You're going to have to ask God for help. You have not because you ask not. So pray. When you open your Bible, you say, God, I need to know what I should teach or preach from this passage of scripture. Well, there's only one way to know what you should teach or preach, and that is as you study, the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom. And as he gives you wisdom, now that wisdom doesn't come down from heaven. Don't you believe that you're going to have some magical thing happen, and all of a sudden it's going to pop in your head? It's going to come through sweat. It's going to come through hard work. It's going to come through study. It's going to come through looking up words, understanding meanings, but it takes you realizing, I need God to help me. I need God to make my mind quick. I need God to help my eyes to see. I need God to help me realize what he's teaching in his Bible. So prayer should be a regular part of your daily life. You should never sit down to study. You should never prepare a lesson that you're not saying, oh God, I need you. When you lay down at night, even in the bed, God, I'm preparing a lesson and I'm getting ready to teach and preach. But before I go to sleep, I want to ask you to please help me. And in the morning when you wake up, oh God, I need your help. I realize I cannot do this job. It's a spiritual job, and I need God to work in my life. So I am an example. I am an example, and I am responsible, and I need God. I'm an example. I'm responsible, and I need God. So pray for all your students. Pray for all your hearers. Pray for your congregation. Pray for your listeners, and pray about what's going on in their lives, because realize you're like the man who stands between God and his word and the people, and you need God to work through you. So prayer is a major part of what you're going to do. The fourth thing is be a personal student of the Bible, not just a teacher, not just a preacher. So you need to become a per, you need to be personally a student of the word of God. It's not like, well, I study to preach. I come up with good outlines 
I have a lot to say. It is, no, I believe the Bible is God's holy word. And I believe that it is well worth teaching and preaching. And I give my life to teach it and preach it. So I want to study it first. I don't need to study it for you. I need to study it for them. It ought to grow out of my life. It ought to be it worked in me first. And it will work in you second. Work at learning more of the word of God. And more than anything else, see how you can practice what you learn. So see, if the Bible doesn't work in you, if the Bible doesn't work in me, then we don't have any right to teach it or preach it to anyone else. And so I want to be a student more than I want to be a teacher. I want to be a listener more than I want to be a preacher. I want to be a practicer more than a preacher. I want it to be a part of my life. Your students will soon decide if you're a hypocrite or not. They will decide if you're a hypocrite or not. They are watching you. Remember the first saying, your things are much more critical for you. People are watching you. You are an example to people. And they're going to decide if you really are who you're supposed to be or if you're not who you're supposed to be. And they're going to be judging you. You can say, well, they ought not judge me. Well, they are going to judge you. Whether they ought to or whether they ought not to, they are going to. So you live it out. That's why I need it to work in me. I'm not looking for a good message people will amen. I'm not looking for a good message that people will like. I'm not looking for a message people will be excited about. I'm looking for something that changes Austin's life. And as it works in my life, I can expect God to make it work in others, pe other people's lives. So get so full of what you will teach that it spills out of you. So as you study, you fill you up. You fill yourself up. You get full of passion for the what it's teaching. You let that truth sink in. Let it get to the very center of your being. Let it become who you are. Let that truth settle in and be a part of you. When that happens, you'll be able to teach it and preach it. Because if it's you, if it's real, if it works, it'll come out of you. You should be very excited about the time with your class. And even more than what, uh, what uh, that, even more that you get to be with them than what you'll be sharing. You got to love them. You got to say, man, I'm going to tell you what works in my life. I'm going to tell you God has done something in me. And so that's why I'm excited about telling you this. I love you. You're important to me. I care about you. And I'm about to preach and teach to you some great truths that are going to change your life. So you should be excited about teaching your class. There should be a fire and a passion in you as you speak of God and his word that your students or listeners can easily see and they can say, boy, that's real to him. I'm not sure I believe it, but he does. It's real to him. It's in his heart. He's full of it. He's on fire for it. He's excited about it. And if that becomes your attitude and they see that in you, they're going to come closer to listening to you. Well, I'm very uh, thankful for the opportunity I have to spend this first time with you and to, sh to share with you uh, different things that might help you as a teacher. Let me review real quickly, and then uh, I will be looking forward to seeing you in the next little video. Uh, the first thing is you're under a stricter judgment. You're expected to live what you teach. And so remember, you ought not do this unless it's real to you. Don't do it to be in front of people. Don't do it for people to like you. Don't do it for the money. Don't do it for the respect. Do it because it's real to you and you're doing it for the Lord. You ought to always be hungry to learn more. You should always realize you are responsible and you are teaching people something very important and you cannot take your time with it or play with it. It must be real. It must be genuine to you. And then realize you need God. Never stand up and preach. Never do anything without getting a hold of God in prayer and asking God to do a work in your life. And I told you that the last thing and maybe the most important thing is you should be a student more than a preacher. You should be a practicer more than a preacher. It should be real to you. You should be making this work in your life. I should go to the Bible, not as a pastor, but as a man of God. Not as just a man of God, but as a student. I want to sit down and say, God, teach me. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity I've had to share just a few minutes with you. And I look forward to doing it again. If you've enjoyed this at all, how about letting me know? Because I feel quite a bit strange uh, just talking to you and hardly knowing uh, what's going to happen. So I look forward to hearing from you. God bless every one of you.